Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. I thought I would take a, a bit of time and catch up on uh, bagging and tagging uh, the parts I've been taking off. Uh, because it gets very uh, overwhelming if you leave it too long, so I'm going to spend for an hour and a half or so catching up. So I'll just show you what I do uh, before we get on to taking the wire harness out because that's the next step in this is pulling the wire harness out, uh, the under dash main wire harness over to the fuel, fuse box and continue on from there. But I'll show you what I do for my bagging and tagging. Excuse me. So of course you need a pen and I have some tags. These are just uh, parts tags and uh, I have a bit of rebar wire here. I like using that on the bigger parts. Also parts that are smaller, that are not a lot of strain on the tag uh, or whatever, I'll use these uh, zip ties, small zip ties. I've got a couple of different lengths of bag sizes, uh, the little ones, I got like these two different ones like here, this size and this size. I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're not big bags. Plus I use uh, just Ziploc freezer bags. The only thing with a lot of these bags, they aren't UV rated. So you, if you're putting these outside, which I don't recommend anyway, but if you are, these will fall apart probably. And I have the large uh, freezer bags and I just have the medium sized freezer bags. It seems to be good enough for what I'm doing. So what I do, I just take a tag. So if it's a big part, doesn't matter what size it is. I, if, a, if I'm using an individual, I'm just trying to explain this. If I'm using a small bag like that, I have to cut, I'll cut the tag down. So I'll just take my knife and I have a little block of wood here too. So I'll just slice a, a piece off the big tag because you don't need to write that much on these things. And I'll cut them down into smaller bite sized pieces, we'll call them, that fit in the small tags. And I still have this for uh, tagging a larger part. Anyway, so right now we'll tag up uh, we'll tag up the heater control just as an example. So I'll just take a tag and I'll use this partial one. It's not a big deal. This will be going in a bag because I want to keep it from getting scratched up any more than it already is. So I'll be putting it in probably one of these bags right here if it'll fit, which I think it will. If not, we'll go to the bigger bag. So then I, what I do is I, I start out always with 65 T-Bird, just like that. And this one here is uh, heater control. So that's pretty much it for that one. Pretty straightforward. Now, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, obviously, you're, I'm going to know what this is. but what happens if I'm not around anymore and my wife has to deal with all this stuff or my family, my kids? Um, what this car becomes then is just a pile of junk and a bunch of parts no one knows where they go. So I, I intend this to be a toe tag uh, project for me. I don't ever intend to selling this car. This will probably go with my estate or you know whatever, passed on to my wife or whatever it is, this car, and she'll deal with it or the kids. So it's a toe tag project for me. But if something happens to me prematurely, I hope not, but you never know. By labeling everything and tagging everything, my estate or my wife or my kids can say, okay, we have this project car with all the parts, they're all labeled, here it is. But other than that, it'll just be a hulk of a car partially finished or stripped out. Anyway, that's why I'm going into detail on all of it because my kids and my wife don't know what these parts are and uh, I don't expect them to. So that's why I'm doing it in that detail, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, now these will be all centrally located and I'll also show you uh, what, on the small parts that I don't want to get crushed and stuff. I have these bins and I've marked keyboard engine bay parts. And then every part in here is either in a bag, a bag, and whether it's in a bag or not, it's still labeled. So I have two of those bins already started. 
for the engine bay. So two engine bay bins. So again, I'm dragging this on and I'm talking too much probably, but it's important, I think, if you care about the project, even after you're gone, which maybe you won't, which <laughs> probably you shouldn't. But anyway, for you, the people that have to deal with the project, that's what I'm saying, that they have a means to say, okay, all these parts came off this car, here it is, but I want more money because this car is complete, just needs to be restored. If it doesn't, this car will go scrap, where I got it from, basically, in the scrap pile. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, uh... I will take just in this one, I'll just use a little, uh, just a little, one of my little straps, my tie straps here. There's a hole right there, a nice juicy little hole to put that into. Oh, got my glasses on, I can't see the tag hole. So shove that on there like that. Tighten it up. Now this won't fit, like, like I say, I'll put it in another one. And something, I don't do this to all the parts because not all parts need to be protected like that. So that one doesn't fit in there very comfortably, so I'm not gonna force it. <clears throat> Some parts, like the engine bay parts, I didn't bag everything because they need to be all reconditioned and stuff. This one here is in pretty nice shape and I don't want it to get any worse. So I'm gonna put it in a bag and then I'll put it in <clears throat> my uh, bin that is for interior parts, which is down here. And I'm going to have more, I'm going to have probably a couple of those interior part bins. So that's it. So I'll continue on with this. And uh, then we'll get into the car. But, uh, I got my uh, parts bagged and tagged, caught up. That took about, uh, I'd say a good hour and a half. Good thing I did it because I, I was starting to forget things. All right, so... Let's, uh, for this part of it, let's go through taking this wire harness off here. So we'll do that first, and then it'll expose all the stuff underneath. So I have a 7 16 on my drill, and uh, I chucked up a uh, adapter for a 7 16 bit, so we might as well go at it. Doesn't really matter where we start. We'll do it right here, I guess. For saving the bolts. some uh, some clips holding it in like here that aren't uh, 7 16 so I'll switch it out I want to keep this all together and I think they're the same up under there they're not 7 16 no they're, I think they're uh, I'm not sure what they're I'll have to find a well, I guess I could take it out and put it back on at the end. Probably have to get it off anyway. Yeah, let's just pull it out. Don't want to break it though. Actually, I think I'll leave that. I'll leave it right on this uh, brake pedal mount. I'll oh, see. There's lots of ways to do it. Yeah, I don't think that'll get forgotten. <laughs> So some of this, I suspect, it goes out to the door here, and it seems to be all, all one piece harness. So I'm not sure where it comes apart, but there are places to take it apart. Well, 
that's for the heater. That's already unhooked. And there's some that go back here, back to Yeah, that's quite a wiring harness that they put in here. Huh. Yeah. There's that. Now, unclip the, uh, there's a little relay right there. I just unclipped it. Nice soft uh, rubbers. All right, what does this one go to? Like all these go lead right back to the uh, right to the fuse box, obviously. There's the park brake wire, I believe. No, nope, that goes down to the dimmer switch. So, all right, well, I'll put us on uh, time lapse and try to figure all this out. Someone's monkey with the brake switch already. They changed that up. All right, when I got done here so far, you saw, you saw me take off all those those bolts that were uh, screws that are holding the harness on up in the up along the firewall. I took off uh, the bracket and I put it back on that uh, retainer harness retainer that goes over a protector. Actually, is what it is. It goes over the uh, brake pedal uh, brackets. Now. It goes out, continues on out to the door, so I'm going to have to move the car aside a bit and get that door open some so I can get the uh, harness out. Actually, if I get on the other side, since there's no fender on, I might be able to get it off from there because this is what I'm after here is this, get this horn off and get the, the power window cables, or yeah, the power window cables up through. And then the, also there's uh, the courtesy light wire as well and I got all these plugs off here and they all are in really nice shape I'm really happy to see that because there's nothing worse than dealing with corroded electrical stuff a little bit of uh, electrical contact cleaner and a little bit of a uh, silicone grease dielectric grease they'll be pretty good a little brushing too inside so let me continue on with that I won't bother uh, doing this on time lapse. I'll just uh, get, come back to you as I get something done and I'll show you what I did.
wiring. Yep. All right, I'm chasing the wire harness down to the fuse box here. Um, let me get it situated. This uh, relay, or whatever it happens to be, uh, goes there, five, up in here, 5 sixteenths, right close to the fuse box. Fuse box bolts are 5 sixteenths. So I see two. Oh, sorry. So two of them. One there and one there. I don't see any more just yet. It wouldn't be unlike Ford to put one in a hidden spot, but uh, let me go with that and I'll get this off. Well, there. That fuse box is done. Come out easily. They are uh, these specific um, screws that go in them, 5 sixteenths. Do they, uh, they look like they have a coating, like a insulator on them. But they're meant for that and they come out easy. So that's good. The only issue I'm having now is, I don't know if you see it, but way up in here, I don't have my lights on, um, there's one more uh, harness holder, of course, it's tucked way up in there. You can never get a spot where the light works. There it is. And that's way in behind the heater. So I'm going to pull the heater out and get that out of the way and continue on with the wiring because, I, like I said, I have to go through the door, get this uh, metal boot off the door, get the wiring to come through. Um, these are the uh, door lamp switches, like for uh, turning the courtesy lamps on and off. And they just plug into here in these little uh, bullet style, these male bullets, connectors. Probably need to replace this, but who knows. Okay, I got the heater box down. Um, the ductwork and everything. These, uh, these uh, heater, are these vent cables still work nice? Yeah, pretty good. Both sides, smooth. That's good. I won't, probably won't have to buy anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, back to the heater box. So when I took the engine out, I removed a bunch of the outer nuts, and I think for the heater, yeah, they're right there. I kept them there. There's four of them, unless I lost one, but I found four that I know of. But I'll, I'll be putting them back on the heater box, so we'll count them at that point. And then there's this one screw that's way up under the dash. So if your dash was on, you would have to reach way up under there to get at that one screw. But other than that, as far as I can see, that's all that's holding the heater in. I undid all the cables off of the uh, the controller here. Oh, see it's falling out on its own. And they just had those little uh, friction clips on it. That's in pretty good shape, really, you know, given the years that it's been there and the condition of the car. I think that's pretty, uh, uh, pretty remarkable, actually. All right, well, let me pull this box out. Probably can do it in the heater cores in here, too, if anybody is not familiar with these. Yeah. We'll take it out. All right, I'll set you down. You, there's what it looks like behind. There's all that insulation and all that's all, all in there. But now I'll have room to get at uh, the rest of that wire harness down in there. Yeah, like I was saying, there were four. One, two, three, four, and then that screw right there. That's all that holds it in other than the hoses and the, and the wiring and stuff like that for the heater, uh, heater assembly, heater box, whatever you want to call it. So that's it. I'm going to set it aside then. Also, I wanted to point out that the dash, and I did that short just to uh, get that out quickly on where all the mounting points were. On these upper mounting points, this one here and the one over there above the brake, they were sealed with a seam sealer, kind of a, you can see it there. The wire harness uh, was also done on this side, this one here. I, I'm not sure. It looks like it's the only one that actually had sealer on it. Well, that's not true. This one did too. 
So it looks like the, yeah, they did. All, all the screws that went out uh, side uh, on the wire harness and that, with the exception of the two you get through the radio hole, which is odd. There were no signs of any kind of sealer on them, which I think there should have been. So I just wanted to point that out, that there are sealers used in the, the mounting of the dash when you're going to remount it, and also the wire harness. Just a little fun fact. All right, going after the wire harness cover between the doors. 5 16th again. And if I can get my socket on there, and it was almost just as easy to do it from this side, the inside, as it was from the, the outside, because when you, you could get one screw easy, the rest you still had to come in here to get anyway. All right, so let me get this off, and I'll get back to you. Okay, working on the door harness. So right down in there, there's the window motor. Right down from the window motor, there was a uh, 5 16 screw holding uh, wire harness uh, retainer on. Just one of those regular ones. I think it's a regular one. It, anyway, I'll, when I get it out, I'll show it to you. Anyway, I had to put a, a uh, uni uh, universal on. To get at it so it doesn't there's really no direct line of sight for that anyhow um, I got it out so also while well, I got you here show you what I did with uh, the boot metal boot for the outside here so I probably could have risked it and taken it um, off so I took the three bolts out and then I just bent those tabs up and pulled this center out so I could release the uh, wiring. Figure it's quicker to do that quicker to do that than all the rest. So now I'm just pulling the wiring through. If it'll come, it'll probably catch on a few things like like most cables do. There she comes. That's for the power windows. One thing about uh, Cables and water hoses. If there's anything to catch on, it'll catch. So let me go look, see what's going on. Anyway, I'll pull that through and then get it through into the car. All right, there's that clip I was telling you about that went through this, uh, this the 5 16th was on. But I have to take this off to pull it through the, uh, the hole in the door. That's what was holding me up. All right, there's the fuse box. And harness on the passenger side out, door harness on the passenger side out. This will go through all the way, through the door jam, through the door, through that uh, apparatus, and then there's the, or through the boot, and into the door for the power windows, and then there's this rubber boot that sticks through from this side out. No problem. The, uh, the courtesy light ones, it comes out, it unhooks from the harness, and it comes out this way. And then this end goes all the way through, in through the door, and comes out through this hole here. So that's how you do that. So one, and they will, the plug and everything does fit through this hole here. But this one here for the courtesy lights, this particular, uh, this boot here, just so you know, has to come out this way. If you put it in the other way, I guess you, you could do it, but then you just have to do this one too. So there's no point. So one goes one way and one goes the other. So that's that. Let's have a look at this fuse box. A little rusty on the back, but let's take a look inside if I can get that swung away. Oh, look at that. Man, that's a nice shape. I have to say, I'm quite impressed with how good the electricals are so far, because I was expecting... This to be, uh, of anything in this car, I thought the electricals would be the worst. Because nothing worked on it when I got it. Yeah, clearly all this stuff needs to be cleaned up. But there's very little corrosion in there. Anyhow, put that screw back with it so I don't lose them. I'll continue, continue on. So, over to that side. I think I might be able to do it without moving the car. Alright, hang in there. All right, I'm over the driver's door, 
and I just took that out of there that just comes through from the back side and through that hole I didn't mention this uh, retainer that's on this and they just pry off I, I think I just have a tack thing here but a trim a trim uh, tool will, will take them off too they just they're just press fit it's not really big enough to get on it it's coming out and there's this one here in order to I think there's another one yeah that retainer that was up there I had to take that off the harness to get it through the hole but this one here I don't think you have to all right let me get this out I just wanted to show that what they are obviously I'm not gonna get that off that easy I don't have my proper tool with me okay this is what the one I meant to point out this one here this is the same deal but this one doesn't have to come off and it's just uh, pressed in six plastic splines this one here when you take it off you'll have to remove it from the wire because they get because you have to separate those when you take them through because one goes through the fire the kick panel and the and the courtesy light comes uh, the door jam area for this though the heck comes through on the body and this one comes back the other way so you have to separate these two I'd say there might have been some uh, problems with the driver's side power windows <laughs> she's pretty pretty gnarly up there I guess that's from bending on that uh, metal boot area anyway so I'm just tucking that back through okay there's the wire harness out the uh, underdash firewall harness not the underdash for the dash harness, but the underwall, the main harness. That's her there. <clears throat> we'll set her out here on the floor where we can see it all. Not that it matters. There. That's her. <clears throat> now I'll bag the screws and I'll uh, tag that all up. Okay, there's, uh, I forgot to mention the wire harness that goes down to the dimmer switch. So it goes through these two uh, retainers. They aren't uh, closed, they're an open retainer, so that you can just slip the wires out over them. And there's the old dimmer switch. It's beat because the harness was corroded right off of it, which is not uncommon. So that's the harness for, like I said, that's the complete harness and how it gets out. Well, there it is. All the uh, over there is the under the under the engine hood wire harness that was left in the car. The main harness that goes right around the engine compartment, and this is all the uh, under dash main harness, <clears throat> right down to the console. Well, that sure opened up the the firewall area quite nicely. We got the uh, vent left to do over there. Get my pointer out over there. That vent housing, and of course the braking brake pedal uh, supports and everything. And there's also the park brake. Other than that, that's going to look after the firewall. Yeah, well insulated this car. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to call it quits on this video right here. We'll pick up uh, in the next video, episode uh, 9, I believe it'll be. This will be episode 8. Episode 9, we'll pick up removing the uh, brake pedal, the left side vent, and the insulation, and see how far we get. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching uh, this episode at James's Repair Shop, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.